Excellent. So yeah, let's just jump right in. Let's start with this. How did you come up with the process that you, that you wrote about in the stack? Yeah, I learned it from a few different people. Main person being Gary Fong a while ago. He did this like add on pages type of a thing. And so I used that for a while and it worked, but not for everybody. No real like sales process works for everybody necessarily. Um, understanding your market, understanding the person that's sitting right in front of you sometimes. So it just evolved into different pieces. That's why there's kind of a different iteration for each person. And when I coach people, I just ask them like, Hey, what are you comfortable with? What do your clients typically look like when it comes to, do you know where they shop? Do you know those types of things? You know, what type of language they use and stuff like that. So it's just evolved into this, but that's where I originally found it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, and we followed Gary's process as well Mm -hmm. with the kind of selling additional pages and all of that. So I'm very familiar with that process. So tell me then what, uh, just kind of give us a summary. What is the stack? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. So the stack itself is just a stack of sample images. I don't, I I think it's really hard to sell somebody something they haven't seen before. You know, there's a zoom, you know, or a web version of meetings as well, but even having something that is tactile or for them to touch and feel, makes it a lot easier for us to serve them with. So the stack is known as just the stack of samples. And so this isn't even like the perfect stack. This is just a pretty looking stack with the four by four on top. I would do it minus this with another eight by eight. So it would go engagement book, And then another eight by eight would be a wedding album and then wedding album, wedding album, never going too big because not everybody wants to look at somebody else's 40 spread, 80 page wedding, keeping it simple and really engaging in the relationship is more important to me, but it's just a set of samples ultimately to kind of like build off of, show them what they can have, what they may want with one being fully loaded, you know, with like a custom box and all the things that you want to offer, put that in one of the albums. So just a stack of albums. Yep. Awesome. And is it sounds like there's a there's a method to the madness there. You talk about mm-hmm. ah, I'd probably have two of these eight by eights instead, and like, yeah. can you walk us through what mm-hmm. the purpose of of each size and like what it? Are you trying to like steer people toward one or what? Yeah. I mean, we've studied a lot of different type of sales things when it comes to like cars or even fast food and things like that. You know, they didn't sell a lot of double doubles until they offered a triple burger. We like the middle humans do in general, but especially from the West, that's where the majority of my clients, about 80% of my clients are here in the States. So when it comes to it, the eight by eight linen thin pages is an affordable book. We also offer a press printed book. So if you're really affordable photographer, I would say start with the press printed because that, you know, 40, $45 difference matters but it's an affordable starter and it's really, really pretty. You know, it's still professionally printed. The heirloom book version of it is really, it's printed the same as all the other ones. So that, that quality is there. The pop is there that you're looking for. And uh, it's a great book to start with. Cause even if you flip through it, you're like, this is a really nice book for a photographer. It's affordable and you can sell it to your client for affordable. That gets them in the door. The majority of this industry photographs weddings for under $2,000. So there's this statistic from a couple of years ago. It says 87% of weddings in the U S were photographed for under $2,000. So a half a million of them were photographed from zero to $500, 500,000 weddings a year, 500,000 of them were 500 to a thousand dollars. And then another 500,000 roughly were from a thousand to $2,000. No shame. It's just really hard to stay in business like that. And so I want to get an album in there. So we have an opportunity to serve our clients really well. Referrals come from this, all kinds of stuff like that. So I start with an affordable book. That's an eight by eight linen thin page. That is 10 spreads, 20 pages. And that is what we call a highlight reel. It's like a cool book, but it's kind of of a wedding. You can't do an entire wedding uh, with 20 pages, just not enough photos to show the entire story. So we say, this is a highlight reel. Most of my clients upgrade to the full length story is what we call it. And an eight by eight is a great engagement book, which is why one of these would be an engagement. It's an engagement book. And I'll show you that when we do your engagements, a lot of clients end up in a 10 by 10. This is by far the most sold album from Kiss and, and kind of like in, in the US, it's that middle yep. road. And so we do an engagement book to show them what an engagement book would be like. We start to plant seeds in there and like, hey, if you want an engagement album, you can use it as a sign-in album where people can sign on the pages, find kind of your favorite photo and sign next to it, which is a, a little more intentional, a little more like, you know, it's like a yearbook kind of like they get to yeah. leave something other than just like the old school, real traditional ones where they just like leave their address. Like, I don't 
know anybody that uses those anymore necessarily, right. but this is kind of the new version of that. And so yeah. it starts to inform them, like, this is a great engagement book. They're like, an engagement book, what do you mean? But then when you reintroduce that around the engagement, they're like, oh, yeah. this is what they were talking about. Now it has my photos in the design. Yes, I want it, or maybe not still, yep. you know? Yep. And then a lot of times I suggest doing like two of the albums, if not the three, the eight by 10 by and 12 by all of them, the same wedding with a few extra spreads in each one. So you can show them, this is an eight by eight. It's a, it's a good size book. Yep. Most, most homes, even apartments can, can really handle a 10 by 10. And that is a great size, a 10 by 20, you know, when it's opened all the way, yep. that's a good size image. And it is beautiful, whether it's a full image or a few on a spread, you start to show them what the larger ones look like. A lot of people yep. think like, oh, a 12 by 12 is only two inches bigger than a 10 by 10 accurate. It's actually 44% larger when you do the math. So each image is almost 50% larger. That is, you know, that, that is a yeah. big difference. And so at the end, when I was photographing real, real high end weddings, I only offered 12 by 12 because they liked everything kind of like big and bold and in your face. It's not too yep. big, you know, in Italy and in, in Europe and stuff like that. Some, some areas like things huge, like 16 by 16 would probably do well over there. It's not, yep. not really the U.S.'s jam, and that's my main target market. And so we just educate it that way. So there is a rhyme to this rhythm and what feels like a little bit of chaos with all this stuff. It's like my, my whole goal is to take what seems chaotic. There's a lot of moving parts when it comes to albums, design, the communication, all these pieces. And we're just ordering that chaos. Like, hey, this is why this makes sense. And yeah. if you can clearly communicate that to your clients, that is when things start getting really well, which is why I wrote that book. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, and I love that because, so the way that we talk about it is, is very similar. I talk about kind of like a four, you know, four album kind of thing. This low one is kind of like, yeah, okay. It's got some photos in it, but I don't really want that. And then this guy is like the kitchen sink, you know, and it's really just there to make everything else look more affordable. And, uh, and it sounds very similar. That's, yep. that's awesome. Now, something that you just said, I think is probably the crux of this whole thing. And it's mm -hmm. as long as you educate your clients properly up front. So talk to me about like, what, in your opinion, what does it look like kind of, okay. So for a photographer who's never sold an album before mm -hmm. they want to start now, they think, okay, cool. I'm going to just start springing albums on people, mm -hmm. you know, after the sales or after the session and all of that. And, and they say, it didn't work, you know, like nobody it happens. Bought. It didn't yeah. work. You know, we hear this a lot too. Mm -hmm. So where should this start? How should it start instead? Yeah. I mean, ultimately a photographer needs to get to a place where they believe in it. Like what, one of the first questions I ask, whether I'm coaching one-on-one -on -one or from a stage with a lot of photographers is like, if you could serve every client with an album, would you want to? And most people say yes. Like I, I've not ran into somebody who said no. I've had some like they're resistant because they're afraid that they're not a good salesperson or their clients can't yeah. afford it. I'm like, okay, we can deal with that. Let's just chat about it. And so falling in love with it, like for them touching and feeling it, doing some research, finding their album company, seeing their work in print matters. If they Absolutely. don't believe in it, it's going to be really, really hard to sell. And so for the photographer to make that decision. So that's the first question I ask. And if they say no, it's like, fine, I don't want to waste your time or my time. You go on and do your thing. I, I'm, I'm here to support photographers and help them be successful. I want ones that are in. I'm going to show up as much as they do, if not more. And so yeah. for them to really like just educate themselves on it, there's not like, it, it is a science to it, but it doesn't have to be rocket science. You know, when I walk into like a Nordstrom, I don't know what the brand is. That's cool necessarily, but that salesperson knows what the in name brand is. They know the shoes, they know the jeans, they know the things. And I'm like, cool, educate me. You're the pro at this. Yep. That's what a photographer's clients expect, you know, like when yep. they walk in, they're like, they may have been on some information site, like the knot or something like that, that has these like list of questions of like, here's what I'm supposed to ask my photographer. And it could be, it doesn't have to line up with what our belief is of like, you want to yep. print your stuff. Sure. You can get a discount if you don't have an album in your package, but I don't do packages without albums in it. And this is yes. why. Because yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten years in, two years into your wedding, to your marriage, I want you to sit down and flip through an album, not email me and ask me for the images so that you can flip through them on your phone. Nothing's wrong with that. But ultimately, I want you sitting on the couch with someone that you care about before you go out to celebrate your wedding anniversary and flipping through an album. Like we have yep. this whole thing where we educate them on that. And you know, StoryBrand does a fantastic job yeah. with this where they just simplify it. Like 
tell your story and then make your client the hero like over and yep. over again just do that so what's your story do you have a wedding album did your photographer because like most of the photographers that i'm educating now they don't have an album so i'm like cool right. that's a great place to start why don't you yep. get yourself an album or let us do the design and we'll kind of treat you like a client we'll show yep. you what the process is like and then i want you to sit down and feel all the feelings when you flip through it for the first time and tell me that it's not different than flipping yep. through a phone like I said, having a mobile device is fantastic, but there's nothing like sitting down and flipping through it. I've done this with my son, with my, or with yep. my kids at different times. I've done this with my, my wife and even with my grandpa. You know, my grandpa loved photos and it's very different flipping through a, through a device and it's beautiful. I love, I love devices as well. They're a gift, but sometimes it's like, let's get rid of this kind of distraction and bring yep. in an album and just flip through it. And so once yep. they fall in love with that and they get through the process, now they have a story. Their story is my photographer was great or not, whatever. And I, I still wanted the images of my wedding. I didn't have one because they didn't provide one for me. And it's not the easiest process. I don't want to, I don't want yeah. you to be in the same shoes I was. So yeah. we're not to like bad talk our photographer, but when it comes down to it, there's a lot of photographers that just don't serve like this. And that is, is okay. I feel like I'm in a little bit of an uphill battle, but ultimately I want to see more people just with albums in their living room so they can sit down and do that. Once the photographer starts to fall in love with that, it's, it, it becomes really simple. It's not necessarily easy, but the process after you practice it over and over again, it becomes easier. And you, yeah. you're just the photographer that, that shows up on social media and shows your clients looking through their album for the first time. That's what social media is for. It, it's yeah. beautiful. You go to a photographer's Instagram tons of great images. You know, that's the goal. That's what we think we're selling, but it's not, it's an entire experience. And how do you want that experience to go? For me, yeah. I want it to end with them sitting on the couch, flipping through their album with emotions, going back to that moment. And that's the magic of photography. And then you put it in print form. I think it just levels up that experience. Yep. That's fantastic. All of that is fantastic. It's, you know, this idea that I want my clients to have something to show for their time with me and not just that, but also to pass down, you know, like nobody's saying like, oh, I can't wait to pass down this JPEG to my grandkids, you know? Yeah. So, you know, just to, to even come at it from that angle of like, look, I'm to kind of come back to this idea of like, okay, well, do I, can I sell, but still serve my client? Cause you know, there was at least for, for a, a while, there was this push toward like, I have to give them everything. And this mm -hmm. is, this is somehow, this is, you know, serving my client. And, and I, I push back against that and basically say that like, that's basically saying like, Hey, here are your files. Good luck figuring out what to do with them, mm -hmm. which is similar to, to, I think what you were just saying about like, it's not an easy process down mm -hmm. the road to figure it out. And, and as photographers, we have access to phenomenal album companies and great prices and all of that. And to be able to, to produce that for our clients is just that last step that I think so many photographers are missing at this point. Yeah. The argument that we hear though, cause we, cause we over here, we teach in-person sales. This is like, it's our bread and butter. It's what we do. Yeah. And the thing that we hear a lot of is either, you know, oh, well, my clients only want the digital files, mm -hmm. which I think you said something similar. You said something that already counters that a second ago. We'll get back to it in a minute though. Or um, I don't want to sell. I want to serve my clients. And I think that was one of the things that struck me immediately starting to read through the stack was that you and I see eye to eye that selling can be service when it's done the right way. And I, mm -hmm. I guess I, I would love to know if you, like, what are your thoughts on that? How those two things can be intertwined? Yeah. When I run into an issue where I only feel like I have one path, I really like sit there and my goal is to stay curious. So what else could be true is what I ask. Even if there's two options, I like to have more than two options if possible, because they say the root word of decision is incision, which means to like cut it apart. It's really hard to make a decision on this one thing. It's like, are we serving them? All I want to do is serve them. It's like, cool. What if what you're doing is, is not serving them as good right. as you can? Is that possible? Yes or no. And if it's not possible, then fine. Just keep going down that path. Yep. But at some point it stops working because we have such a turnover rate in our industry as well, because it's like, you can only photograph so many families, so many weddings and for so much money without there being some type more of an experience. And so, you know, there, there are a lot of photographers, just like there's a lot of 
you know, fast food options or, or car dealerships, you know, we have options. And when it comes down to this particular thing, the, the thing that we run into is like, oh, our clients can go get their own album. It's like, that is true. Yep. The other statistic that made, made it to where like, I'm showing up and helping because 87% of albums that get started in, no, sorry, it's between 70 and 80%. Between 70 and 80% of albums that get started in the consumer world do not get printed. So it's called an abandonment rate. They start huh. a design and then they don't finish it. Now, it, this is in the consumer world. So yeah, there's, there's uh, family vacations. There's people that tried to do their own baby book or whatever it is. There's a lot of things out there and that is totally fine. But because of the other statistic that almost 80% of weddings are photographed around $2,000, I can guarantee you there's probably a million plus, probably a million and a half weddings that do not have albums each year in the US. So they're out there trying to do this and they're like, this is too much. The process yep. is a lot. It could be the designers clunky. It could be they don't, they're not a designer themselves, so they can't get it how yeah. they want to. So I really like to have options there. But yeah, I, I tell them like, don't give them the images. Why are you giving them the images? Because that's what everybody else does, because that's what they want in order to book me. Okay, that's fine. Just serve them in a way that they, they have a hard time saying no. Or if, if that experience lines up with what they're looking for, and they may not even know when they walk in the door what they're looking for. When I walk into a, a Honda dealer, I know what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not looking for a race car. I'm probably looking for a family sedan or a minivan. And so I know what I'm looking for. Your clients may or may not, when they come in there, they know they're looking for a photographer and they think it's just a service. But if you can walk them through this and like, they're like, why don't you give us the images? It's like, I'm not, I don't want to hold your image captive. I want you to have them. Actually, if you upgrade your album, I give them to you as well, or you can buy them. If you yep. want to buy them and do this yourself, it's totally fine. I just know what it's like to design an album and it's not the easiest process. I want to tell your story and I've done this X amount of times, however many weddings or whatever you, I want to tell your story and I want it to be part of the experience where I get to serve you. We're going to get this album to tell the story, how you want it told. So we yeah. can do our images and, and swap them out and things like that. When it comes down to it, to just give you all, you know, six, seven, 800,000 images from a wedding, there's too many people out there that just never end up with an album. And that's not what I want. So all my packages have an album for that reason. And I don't just give away the images. I want you to have the images and that's not, it, it's not about holding it hostage or making more money on it. Even I want to serve you really well. And for me, that looks like this. I want you to sit down on the couch and flip through an album not just put a jump drive in or find the link to your images and flip through them. I want you to have access to it wherever you're at. But ultimately, yeah. when you're at your house, I want you sitting down and, and having the, the same experience that, that we designed. And yeah. it, it's, a, it's a beautiful day and there's a lot going into it. Why not have it in an album, you know? And then I'll give you your yeah. images. I don't mind doing that. I just like, I picked an album company. I picked a lab for this reason. Yep. Costco's, Costco's great for certain things, but you get what you pay for as well. And so they do Christmas cards for affordable. They do prints for affordable. It's still not the easiest process, you know? We actually, a lot of us use the same printers, like Costco, all the big labs, we use the, the same printer, but it, it does come down to like, the, the machines are amazing, but there is an art to printing, you know? Yeah. And I, I chose that because of the quality that I wanted. Now, I don't always sell on quality, but, uh, but if you put this next to some of the albums that they can have access to, it is going to be different. I, I don't yeah. like bad talking other companies because you right. get what you pay for and that's totally fine. Right. But I, I want to serve you well. Let me serve you well. I feel like I'm doing a disservice. A lot of my past clients, you know, this is what I would say. A lot of my past clients, they don't have albums and I feel bad about that, you know, because yep. They wanted an affordable photographer and they hired me to do a service. I felt like I did yep. a disservice by not taking them to the finish line. So that's yep. why I do what I do, you know, yep. and it, it's hard because some people do say like, oh, I tried it and it didn't work. It's like, cool. Can we break it down? Like, show yep. me what you did because I have a process, but it's about this long, you know, where it's like, yeah. if you don't do all these steps, it makes it very difficult, you know, from where, where we learned a while ago, it was the same thing. If you miss any yep. of these things. You can lose their trust and it, it's not good if you lose trust over money. But if yep. you do every single one of the things, you clearly communicate it. 
one of the things about creatives, I'm a creative, so I understand this. I'm a creative running a pretty large business. And, and I run into that when it comes to numbers, when it comes to clearly communicating. I, I've had to spend a lot of time on writing, on communicating, e even with my words, because it's hard to make everything up here for a creative make sense and to get it to come out. That's why we play the guitar. It's why we take pictures. Yep. It's why we paint. It's like, see, this is what is in my head. I want to show yeah. you this because I can't communicate it clearly. Right. Right. But you can learn to, you can learn yep. to. And so that's why we write the emails. We're doing all these things to support the photographer. Like, here's what to say, make it into your own language. Yep. But here is, here is a start, you know, right after yep. the, right after the consultation, this is the email to send to make sure that these four things were said so that it, that it is set. And there's a paper trail before the engagement. Yep. This is the email to send after the engagement. This is the email to send before the wedding. This is the email to send. Here's the three emails to send after it. We've written all those. So it's like, yep. here, here's how you communicate it. They're like, oh, see, I didn't do this. It's like, yeah, if you yep. didn't say that in the consultation, we make sure to catch that right afterwards in an email. Because if yep. you email it, now there's a paper trail. It's not guaranteed they're going to read it. But if you ever run into something, say like, oh, that email that I sent on April 27th, it said that, but I, I, I totally get it if you missed it. I don't read all my emails yep. either. You know, yep. make sure they're heard and that they're seen and then just get in there with them and be like, yeah, this is why I serve the way that I do. You can still have... The highlight reel that's what's in your package yep. but most clients spend extra money on the album to get in 10 by 10 or a 12 by yep. 12 and i want you to have an album because this is what i want for my clients this is the experience yeah. you know so there's a lot to it i totally yep. understand that but i break it down and try and make it as simple as possible simple is not the same as easy Owning a business isn't right. easy. If we want easy, we might as well just go work at Starbucks and get some benefits and some right. free coffee. That's fine right. too. There's yeah, days yeah. where I still want to do that. There's days where me and my wife are like, we both own businesses. We're like, uh -huh. all right, time out. Cause this is tiring. <laughs> I'm emotional. This is, I'm exhausted and we have life as well. This is hard. Yeah. I want to go to work and come home sometimes, you know, yeah. but that's what we signed up for. And uh, yeah. what do we want our business to look like? Is it an extension of us? Is it this vision yeah. that we've created that is like this? beautiful experience that the clients go through. When we go through somebody's life, what is it that we left? Well, what's yeah. the experience look like? What did they say about it? Not, not just for our ego, but for the fact that it's like, I loved them and this is why, because we served yeah. them well. They yes. don't talk about the photos. They hardly ever talk about the photos. And even if they talk about the photo, they talk about the, the story behind the photo. The and it does, exactly. it goes with it. This photo is amazing. And I remember yep. what they said to me as they photographed this, or I remember what I said to my, this person I'm in love with in the photo. That's what they talk about. I get the chills all the time talking about this stuff. Cause that's what we were made for is these stories and these experiences. But we keep sh saying like, what about this photo? Isn't this one awesome? And look at the edit on this yeah. photo. Those are right. fine. Keep getting better at that. Please do. But tell them of the experience. People don't yeah. buy what you do. They buy how you make them feel. And that's what they remember too. They do not remember what you did. They remember how you made them feel, why you did it. I have it on the back of the shirt. This become you brand <laughs> is this thing that is like who you are is greater than what you do. They both matter. Yes. What you do is, is there's all these beautiful things about what you do, but who you are as you do that, that is what makes you who you are. And what does that look like? Do you actually work on that part? And do you yeah. write it? I write it out. I have this like to do and to be list every day that I write out. And on my to-do list is like, you know, I'm working on my United talk. I have a certain amount of water. I want to drink flights, you know, all this stuff yep. on my to-be list. It's like, I want to be consistent. I want to be healing. I want to be growthful. I want to be bold. I want to be competitive. I want to be kind. And those yeah. all, I will do all of those things today because I have it written yep. down. It's like yeah, my, my brilliant. chart. It's like, this is North and this is what I yep. want. And the to-dos yep. are going to happen along the way. I'm going to catch fish along the way on this trip, but I know the direction that I'm going. And that's yep. the Seneca, I think says it. If, if you don't have a direction or if you don't have a port to sail to, it doesn't matter how good the wind is. The wind can right. be in your favor, but it doesn't matter. It's like fun when the wind's in your favor, right. but if you don't have a direction, it's like, for what, why are we doing yeah. this? You know, yeah. that's when we get burnt out. Dude, this. I love this call. I love this call so much already. Man, there's a lot to unpack there. I think one of the things I really love that you just talked about is this idea of this is how I serve my clients. And I really love how you parse this and how, and how you kind of split, you, you, you walk that line of like, there's nothing wrong 
with the way that other people are doing it. Mm -hmm. This is how I do it. And to the photographer who feels like, oh, well, everyone else in my market is just giving the digitals and mm -hmm. all of this, I want you to think back. And if you have to rewind this episode right now and listen again to Sean going through how he talks to his clients and imagine that your client has now talked to all of those other photographers in your market who are just giving the digitals. And when they said, hey, I just want the digitals, all those photographers just said, okay, right mm -hmm. now think about how much you're going to stand out if you said the things that Sean just said and how it's going to feel like so much more of a special experience and a special opportunity as a client to, to be able to work with someone like Sean who says, look, this is why I do what I do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cave on that. I'm not going to say, eh, but I really just want your money. So never mind. No, this is why I do what I do. And you know, it's not for everyone and that's okay, but here's how I serve my clients. This is what service looks like to me. And I, I just, I really love that because I think that it allows you to just kind of be you to do what it is that, that truly makes you feel like you're, you are putting something amazing out into the world. But at the same time, it's, it naturally separates you from mm -hmm. everyone else in your market. And, and like, if that's not a win-win, then I don't, I don't know what it is, you know, like yeah. I get to do what I do for the reasons that I want to do what I do. And other people are going to resonate with it. It's going to resonate with other people. And uh, dude, that's awesome. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So we've talked a lot about wedding. Can this be translated over to portraiture as well? And yeah. are there any differences? Yeah, there are differences just because of the cost of the actual photo photo shoot and the number of images that you deliver. So on a family, especially like on a mini shoot, you're delivering maybe 30 images, maybe 50. And that's like if you're a heavy shooter during a mini session, especially if they're 15, 30 minutes long. Yeah. So it, it all translates, but it just, it changes. So the stack looks a little bit different. There's not a lot of 12 by 12s. Although I do have clients that are selling 12 by 12s to like senior parents, you know, like the yeah. high school seniors. So I have some of the top portrait work in the world or, or in, in, for kiss like the most albums ordered a lot of them are portrait because they have because they're not shooting 50 weddings 50 weddings is a lot right like i shot right. 60 over 60 for two years and i was like that's when i got burnt <laughs> out in my systems i like i probably could have done it differently of course you learn and stuff like that but right. nonetheless it's a lot you can only do that for so long i just shot a wedding a couple of weeks ago i was like man these are still really hard you know <laughs> so yeah it translates really well i have a boudoir client that i'm working with that is like phenomenal and a lot of us don't know who she is and that's the thing she just does her thing and she has yes. 150 shoots a year year and she wow. averages a very high dollar and every one of them gets an album. And so she's one of my top clients. I mean, 150 albums a year is no joke. And she doesn't right? do like the eight by eight. She she's in a 10 by 10. It's still a thin page. She's, she does some thick page and stuff like that. But yeah, I have families. We just did a thing with Rebecca Rice and she's doing it for minis. I have a couple of senior photographers that photograph high school seniors and all of their clients get albums and the way they do it is beautifully. So the same thing, they have two clients kind of like the, the parent and the, yep. and the child. And so what they do is they're selling to their client. The one that they're photographing is always their client. That's what I did it as well. And so when they're talking to the senior, they're like, I know you want your images for fill in the blank social media, you know, Instagram, yep. whatever their thing is. But the only way that you actually get the full res image is if you print it. And so right. then they start talking about the album because then they get 30, 40 images in an album. Their parents get an album, they get the images, you know? So that's yeah. how that works. Boudoir is very similar. Like, yeah, I'm not going to just give you these images. I will sell them to you after the fact, but I want them printed. This is a special keepsake. So I want to put them in, you know, maybe a small book or whatever it is. You know, it works yeah. with families. It works across the board. We're doing a legacy thing right now with Jamie Fisher. She's fantastic as well, where she is taking the grandparents. She's photographing as many generations as are, as are there. There's typically three. And the grandparents get to leave something for their kids and the kid and mm -hmm. the grandkids, whether or not the grandkids exist yet. And so they do this photo shoot, a multi-generational photo shoot. And then they ask these questions and write it out and put it in the album for them so that when when I'm gone I've said to my grandkids who aren't even here the things that I want for their life and oh, the, whatever gosh, it is these incredible. gifts you know so it's like and they do it all in an album because sure I have you know boxes in my basement that have photos in them and I like flipping through them old photos of me when I was young my kids get to see and things like that but when it's all like 
put together in an album. That's beautiful as well. We have this stack of albums downstairs. Every year we hire a photographer and we have just like, hey, this is us in 2019. This is us. And, yep. and my kids still love my, I have a 12 year old that loves these photos. He's a little me, but he, he'll come up and be like, hey, tell me about, tell me a story about me at this age. And it's from when he was like six, you know, like six years yes. ago. And I'm like, kid, you were, you, you climbed on stuff and you were hilarious and you can't sit still when the music's going. And that's why this photo is of us dancing, you know, cause you're the one that wanted yep. to dance. So we danced. And I just love that stuff in an album, you know? And so it works across the board. We're doing a lot of things where we're helping photographers do this, but also like studying the photographers that it's working really well for. So I'll just pull up the top 20 and I'll just reach out to them and be like, what are you doing? How are you selling a hundred yep. albums or how are you selling 50 albums? And they're like, yep. well, you know, this is how I'm doing. It. I'm like, cool. I study it. I put it in a book for you to read, or we create education or we sell, you know, serve with their education. Like here's yeah. Rebecca Rice. This is how she's doing it. We worked with her. We've kind of polished it with her and here it is, you know, go buy a course from her because she's doing it really well. So yeah, it works yeah, across fantastic. all platforms. And again, like you said, it does separate you. Yeah. We, we want to find a way to brand ourselves and, 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 pick a hill that not many people are on this yes. is a, this wasn't always a way you know it used to be back in the film days it was like here's your film here's your album here's your film here's your album now it's like here's your digitals have at it you know and yep. uh, there's just not a lot of albums out there a lot of times my clients i, I walk them through how to post about like now you're going to serve all your clients with albums whether it's portrait or wedding and they have past clients reach out to them or they have followers that Yes. They never photographed yep. that are like, Hey, can you do an album for me? And they're like, I'm right. not sure. And I'm like, I don't teach that part other than like, if you do get the rights to the photos, cause I don't yes. want to step on anybody's toes, but it's like, yeah, yep. there's a lot of people out there that don't have an album that are like frustrated. Like, Oh, you do this. Great. Right. Cause my, my photographer didn't. So I'd love yes. one from you or they're yep. sitting there flipping through one of these books and it's a family shoot. And they're like, I want an album. I have these photos on my wall that I change out every year, which is great. We do the same thing, but I want an album to go back to so that when I swap out those photos, I still have the ones from when my kid was X years old or from yep. when we were this. I just love yep. that stuff. Yep. That's yeah. That's awesome. So we, we play a lot in the wall art world. Yeah. Swift colors and all of that. So, but we have, we get the same thing. Some of our users saying like, dude, I just got an email from somebody who was like, Hey, I saw you did this and we got married three years ago. We don't have anything. Can you create a, you know, a, a gallery wall for us? Mm -hmm. I'm like, awesome. Do they have the, you know, do they have the, uh, the rights the rights. To the images? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. All right. Then what's the it? question? What's the problem here? Yeah. Have fun, yeah. You know? I, I had a photographer that I've been photographing for like two years. And so she went back to her past like 12 photographer or 12 weddings that she had photographed to serve them. And I think seven of them picked, but yeah. then I saw their orders come in and cause I was following her cause I was coaching her like really closely. And she ended up with like 17 albums. And I was like, was there a lot of parent books or what? She goes, no, I had people come out of the woodwork that I had never talked to on social media because of that post. And they wanted me to do that. And I was like, I got the chills because it made me a little nervous. Like, and she goes, I got the rights. And yep. a lot of the, a lot of photographers were already out of business and stuff like that, but they didn't have an yep. album. They wanted one. She ordered yep. 17 albums. She made like $20,000 on albums and seven of them were hers. The other 10 yep. were from other photographers yeah. that weren't serving their clients with it. And yep. I'm like, I'm still gung ho. I love creative entrepreneurs. I was a photographer for 15 years. I still photograph yep. from time to time, but I I'm in love with that. Yeah. But the disservice is, is like affecting kind of like the, the way that a house looks now without albums or without mm. photos in it. And so I'm like, do I go to consumers? I still don't. And I, and I don't yeah. see it in the future. What I'm going to continue to do is just sit with photographers. And I thought yeah. oh, I need to change the industry and it got overwhelming. And I was like, that's a bit much. <laughs> I get to choose the ones that want to sit in, in Kiss's atmosphere, yep. you know, with the album yep. company. And, and we've started to work with an organization called the Album Assistant, where we're going to do a whole process with them and then start awesome. tying that into, into Kiss and to other album companies as well. But we'll do it for you when it comes down to it, because I don't want somebody to, to, to kind of step on your toes. You've already done yep. so much work in getting that and you made money at it as a service, but why? They're your images. Why not? Go ahead and take them to the finish line and make some money. And the thing exactly. about it is that blows my mind is they could, they, I've had clients spend a, a large amount of money because I shot some high end weddings towards the end. But even when it was like, here's your album that you upgraded and you spent $2,800 on extra on top of the three grand you already yep. paid me to do it back when I was doing that. Every time, whether it was those high-end weddings or those ones that were like a thousand bucks, $3,000 for an album, whatever it was, every one of them thanked me. 
when I yes. put it in their lap and I get to see them flip through it for the first time, they're like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. And I'm like, I just served you well. That's what you're thanking me for. And they, in their mind, they know that's not the first, that's not the last time they're going to flip through that album. And yes. I, and I just, I just share that with them when I deliver the albums, like, Hey, you know, marriage is what it is. And it has an up, is an ups and it's downs, but a yearly reminder that we got married on this day. We said some things that are really important to each other. We bought dinner for 200 of our friends. We'll never do that again. <laughs> right. And it's, it's a big day, but it's not always easy. I want to get back to the moment that I looked at you like this. Cause there's sometimes yep. where I'm like, I don't even really like this person all that much. I still love them and I, I want yep. what's best for them, but they're not showing up that well. They can't even get their laundry in the hamper or whatever it is that we're arguing about, you know, finances and kids yep. and all these things that we could argue about. Yep. But it comes down to this moment where we want to be connected. The opposite of a lot of things is actually connection. And that's what I love about albums. Because when you sit down, I've been married for 20 years now, but nine years in, we almost called it quits because we had lost this connection. We started to grow indifferent to each other because we had hurt each other so much. And yet, when you look at this wedding album of like, I remember when we were kids getting married and we, we could see the future in each other. And I yeah. lost that along the way. And I want that back. And so what's it going to take for me to look at you this way? Because I have a hard time with you right now, but I want to believe in you again. I want to do these things. And so when I give them that album, I just tell them every year before you go out to dinner, before you call an Uber driver or whatever you're going to do, sit down, pop a glass of your favorite and remember what it was like on that day. Remember the weight of yourself in those shoes. What was the temperature of the day? What were the things that you said to each other? And I've had people call me years later, like, Hey, I remember when you gave me that album and you said those things. And I cried because I was in love with the person. I'm having a hard time with them now. What do we do? Hmm. You know? And I was like, well, I'm not a therapist. Uh, <laughs> right. This is what's worked for me. You know, definitely get some professional help, but yeah, we want to get back to that connection. And these albums just have a way of drawing us back into that yeah. because it's like, when you sit there and you look at it, you, your mind goes back to that moment. And if it's a joyous moment, you're like, I want that feeling again. People don't buy what you do. They buy how you make them feel. You took that photo. That is why they paid you to do that. But it is everything about the emotion in that photo that they, they remember. And that is what we love. As humans, we love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. I, uh, I could go on for hours. This yeah. is fantastic. We could do it again, too. Uh, like, I, yeah, I love exactly. podcasts and is, stuff. So. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, so if you're listening to this right now, I want you to stop what you're doing, everything else go grab this book. It's mm. a couple of bucks. I don't even remember how much it is. It's, it's seven it's bucks. We're doing it like basically free plus shipping. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. So it's called The Stack. Where can they get it? Is there a specific URL they can go to? Yeah. Just jump on Amazon. You can type in, okay. you know, my name, Sean Gordon and The Stack and that pops up. I think it's seven bucks, maybe seven ninety nine on there. We're trying to give it away basically. Yeah. And yeah, get it. It's a hundred pages. It's an easy read and it walks you through it. And then reach out yep. to me if you have questions, because me and the team love, well, once you know the information, it makes it so much easier. I'm fine educating you on it as well, but that's why we wrote the book. It's just to help you kind of like dig in. Some people learn different ways. So we're trying to hit it from every way possible, because you can serve your clients better. You can show up differently. You may not feel like you're the greatest salesperson. Great. Then let's look at it a different way. What if you're serving your clients? What if by not being a good salesperson, you're doing a disservice to your clients. What if you're leaving an experience on the table? Not even the financial part. That is a that is a benefit as well. But you could be leaving other pieces on the table where there's like referrals. There's a reasons that people will talk about you because of the way that you serve them. So I've made it simple. I've not made it easy. It's not easy to run a business, you know, but I may, I'm making it as simple as possible. So here's the process. Here's two or three different ways that you can do it and then reach out. But it, like, I'm stuck right here. I don't understand it. Or it doesn't feel like me. It's like, great. Let's hash that out. I love shaking that type of stuff out because I want you to come through this. I want it to be your, your language, your heart in this. Cause this is just a, a way of doing it. You still get to show up and make it yours. It's your business, your photos, all those things, your experience. Ultimately, this is just like a process that you get to follow that makes it a little bit simpler. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And if you want to go check out what they're doing over at KISS, it's just KISS.us, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So go check it out. Beautiful, beautiful books, but definitely pick up, pick up the stack. It is, it's like he said, it's a super easy read, but it's going to be one of these things that you're going to dog ear every page. You're going to highlight all kinds of stuff. It's a fantastic little book. And honestly, it was the thing that was like, okay, well, now I want to write a book. 
you know, like I, I went through it and I was like, now I want to write a book. This is, this is great. So yeah. Sean, thank you so much for doing this. I really, truly appreciate your time. Sure thing. Uh, and uh, let's do this again soon. Yeah, let's do it.